is Halloween night. It's Halloween night. It's Halloween night. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to Theater Twenty Four's uh, Fall Twenty Twenty Rendition Radio Twenty Four. Uh, we are super, super excited to debut three radio shows that ha- that have never been seen before and will probably never be seen again. We'll only have to hope. The shows、uh, in order are the American Antipodes, is it heaven or is it South Dakota, and finally, I Arkansas Ghost. Please enjoy. American Antipodes, is it heaven or is it South Dakota, and finally. I Arkansas Ghost. Please enjoy. Sir, excuse me. Sir, and the poets. Is it heaven Sir, or is it South Dakota? And finally, yes, I Arkansas、course. Ghost. Please. Sir, we dropped the coordinates you gave me, but I'm not seeing an airstrip anywhere. You see this land? Yes, sir. I was the one planning. All of this land is mine. <laughs> All sir, of it. Excuse you, my loyal sir, excuse me. Sir, and the poets. Is it heaven? Sir, soon we will have all the bison we could dream of. Bison here? I would really prefer an airstrip, sir. Are you sure we have the right coordinates? Absolutely. I got them directly from my real estate agent. There's no way he would mess up something like that. Besides, do you think I got where I am in life by keeping to the pavement? I did not. Anything worth my time is off the beaten track. Yes, one must make one's own beaten track. Well, I don't know if the track will be beaten so much as scorched, sir. Now my beautiful wife's landing strip is waiting for me down there. So why don't you scorch your own landing strip down here, wherever you like? Or I'll contact the airline about your inability to handle a little improvisation. Sir, I really must. Excellent. I'll be at the mini bar. Ah,、oh, Montana. It's colder than I expected. Who knew these mountain summers could be so brisk? In any case, I'm off to see my new bison dairy ranch. Care to join me? No, sir. I'll be staying with the wreckage. The plane that you wrecked. Oh well, suit yourself. Now where is that house? Should be around here somewhere. Who was that? My husband. Well, nothing to worry about then.、Oh, wait, wait. He, he hasn't arrived already, has he? <laughs> no way. I've never known him to be on time in his life.、Hmm. If you say so. Ugh. He's 
not going to leave us alone, is he? Hello, dear. What is it now? Bumpy flight? As a matter of fact, it was. That pilot does not know how to land a plane, let me tell you. That's the last time I book a private flight with that airline. But that's not the matter at hand, so to speak. I've just landed at our gorgeous ranch, or at least I, uh, think it's gorgeous. What do you mean by you think it's gorgeous? Well, it is a bit dark out my dear. Dark? Anyways, where are the bison? Our agent assured me this location came already outfitted with a herd of lovely dairy bison. Oh, it's always about the damn bison with you. Well, you're the one who didn't want kids. Let a man take his pleasure where he can get them. Namely, in my bison. Where are they? There's nothing but sheep. I keep tripping over them. Sheep? Honey, where are you? You're at the base of the mountain, right? Yes, yes, it's big and looming and all that. Well, the house should be right there. It's too damn dark to see. What? Honey, it's eight in the morning. It surely is not the sunset on the plane ride over. You must be confused about time zones, dear. We're a long way from New York. Not that long. Are you sure you're at the ranch? Of course I am. The fresh air, the animals, the mountains, the distinct lack of skyscrapers. If this is not a bison ranch, then I'm not the smartest hedge fund manager in New York. <laughs> well. Are you suggesting that our very capable, very expensive real estate agent sent me to the wrong place? I would like to speak to him this instant. Put him through. I don't have his number in this phone. Right. Sure. Yes. Um... <clears throat> Your call is being transferred. Here. <clears throat> Hello, sir. How can I help you? I would like to know where in the goddamn hell my house is. <laughs> if you could just calm down, sir. I'm sure we can get all this sorted out. I had the pilot fly to the exact coordinates that you gave me. Well, then you can't be far. Let's make a quick check, and I'm sure all the pieces will fall right into place. Um, can you verify the coordinates for me? Hmm. Yes, I suppose so. I have them right here. 48.9 degrees. That's negative 48.9. What? 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 Oh. Oh my god. Darling, are those penguins in the background? Maybe. Did you fly all the way to the Southern Hemisphere? Wait, wait I thought I was on the phone with our real estate agent. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not important. You're, you're stuck in Antarctica? Where are you? Where is he? Why are you in the same room as him at eight in the goddamn morning? Honey, honey, let's not get hasty here. I am, I am paying good money for that agent. Does the contract not include a clause about not sleeping with my fucking wife? Oh, would you look at that? Um, my, my boss is calling. Gotta go. I'm your boss. <clears throat> um, sir. Uh, we at Dreamhouse Real Estate are so, so terribly sorry about this little mix-up that stranded you in, um, Antarctica. We care deeply about the well-being of our customers, and we will have this sorted out in no time. You just, um, stay put, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll do something. Now, we at Dreamhouse Real Estate are not liable for transport to and from any of our locations, <laughs> so if you try to sue us, um, it won't work. Have a good day. Great. Now you've gone and ruined everything. Me? What, what about you? I thought this was going to be it. The start of our golden years. Our ranch, our bison babies, our organic USDA certified buffalo milk, our Montana. 
No, you are supposed to come here, fall in love with this stupid house with its stupid buffaloes and spend a stupid fortune on it up front. I thought you always wanted to live in Montana. Who the fuck wants to live in Montana? Me! Me wants to live in Montana. Yeah, because your idea of a good time is being gored by a herd of buffalo 40 miles from anyone who can hear you scream. Buffalo are noble animals and you should... Whatever. So what? What was supposed to happen? Your lover closes the deal, you, you divorce me, and then you abscond with him and his cut of my fortune? Yes. Are you confused? Look, you had me sign that crazy prenup at the beginning. We needed the cash, but no, you couldn't let me have one good thing, could you? You had to fly to the opposite, desolate asshole of the earth. Montana is not that bad. Well, well it was your side piece who sent me through the wrong coordinates. And you were stupid enough to fly to them. Just how long do you think the flight is from New York to Montana? How should I know? People are supposed to handle that for me. How was I supposed to guess that we were going to get stuck on the opposite ends of the earth? Honey, we've been on opposite ends of the earth for a long time now. And now I'm stuck in goddamn Montana because you didn't ask me before selling our penthouse for a stinking USDA certified organic buffalo milk farm. Come on, we're leaving. There are no bison for us here. Off to the real Montana. We had the wrong coordinates. You don't say. Well, Unfortunately for us, my landing gear got busted to try and land on icy volcanic rock, so we're not going anywhere. Yes, yes, well, hurry up and make those repairs. I have some words to exchange with my wife and her incompetent lover. Who's that? Oh, how good of you to notice. This is Pierre, a scientist. They're one of this entire goddamn island, 100 or so inhabitants. I'm sure you'll have plenty of time to get acquainted. Enchanté. Welcome to the Kerguelen Islands Research Station, over 2,000 miles from the nearest permanently inhabited land. We do not know how you got here. We are not even sure it is legal. So is that where we are? As it turns out, your desolate fucking buffalo farm is the antipode of the Desolation Island. Antipode? The literal exact opposite side of the world. I don't know how this happened, it's not even how coordinates work. But it turns out... But fuck Montana is one of the only two locations in the entire contiguous United States to be antipodal to land. Just tell me when the next flight leaves this wretched place. Can't. It's only boats. Planes, surprise, surprise, aren't allowed to land here. But then put me on a boat! Alright, sir. I'll get right on that. The next boat leaves in about four months. Four months? Now, if you don't mind, me and Pierre are going to go get drunk. I, I need to call my wife. Hello? I'm stuck here for four months. Four months? <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, the real estate office can't fix this until you're here to sign the papers in person. And since you sold our penthouse, I don't have anywhere to go. You know, I don't really feel bad for you. Well, darling, I hope you find as much pleasure in the penguins as you did with the buffaloes. It'll be a long four months. Have fun. Cool. All right. Thank you all so much for watching that. That was The American Antipodes by writers Wyatt and Thomas Quancy.
produced by Nat Aras, d- sound designed by Anton Outkind, composed by Michael Schuller, um, with graphic designer also being the sound designer, Anton, and our actors, Elizabeth, Josh, Beth, Anton, and Nat. Our next uh, our next play is titled, Is It Heaven or Is It South Dakota? We'll see. That was not my beautiful house, nor was it my beautiful... <coughs> Doctor! Doctor! I'm sorry, Melania. <coughs> The good news is that he's still alive, but the bad news is that he's on life support. Thank you. Will he wake up? Tell me. Well, statistics say that... To hell with the statistics. They're all fake anyway. Tell me if he, my husband, the President of the United States, will he wake up? I'm sorry. People in comas can sometimes retain what is spoken to them during comatose, however, (coughs) meaning you can still talk to him. He might even be dreaming. Oh my goodness, where am I? Hello, is anybody there? Oh my god, it's so white up here. I love it. Tommy DeVito has entered the chat. Tommy, my man. Oh, I thought you were dead. Everyone thought you were dead. But I knew. I knew the China virus was a hoax. I've been telling everyone it's a hoax. I tested positive a week ago, and I'm still alive. Take that, Democrats. Give me my phone, Tommy. I must tweet. I must tell the American people. No, Mr. President. Coronavirus was decidedly not a hoax. And I am decidedly dead. But I recovered. Ergo... You must also be... dead. Uh, well, then heaven looks quite a bit like America. Say, is this a Proud Boys meeting? Or is this South Dakota? You're in purgatory, sir. Excusez-moi, mi amigo. You're you're in purgatory, sir. A a purgatory that looks a little like the Badlands. Just a little, because you're not all bad. Just... A judge will be uh, adjudicating whether they're allowed to go to heaven or hell from here. Uh, Mine's been delayed because they're trying to instate RBG. Oh, there is just no way. This must be a mistake. They must be here to adjudicate something I asked for, not my merits. I'm... I'm sorry, sir? You see, I asked to be placed on Mount Rushmore as the fifth president. I was the best president around since... uh, Since the... Since the forgettable presidents. Sir, I am not sure that's how it works. Oh, uh, well, Tommy, I am certain. I'm the president, and I say I should be on Mount Rushmore. Now, where do I go to see a judge? Ah, uh, there we go. This train. This choo-choo train shall bring me places, just like I brought peace and prosperity to this great nation. So long, good friend. This joint calls itself the Trump Diet, huh? Well, let's see what's on the menu. A well-done hamburger and a Coca-Cola? <laughs> let's see. Now, is that for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? <laughs> Good one, Donald. It's all of them. Why, hello there, Mr. President. Alexandria ocasio Cuarto, What are you doing here? Thought I'd return to my bartending roots to help you out on this journey of yours. Or you just wanted to take a break from those Democrat-run hellholes? I know, right? People eating out at restaurants, walking in Central Park, slowing the spread of COVID, perhaps not dying from it? Couldn't get any worse than that. (laughs) Hmm. Thought you were supposed to be nice to your customers. Is this the tolerant left they're always talking about? Of course. What can I get for you, comrade? Oh, let me think on that one for a second. I'll take a well-done hamburger... With a coke. Grassy ass. Unless there's one thing well done about you. Hmm? The only thing on the menu, huh? Would you like a side of cranberry relish with that? 
Cranberries? <laughs> Never heard of it. Cranberries are what the commies eat, and I am not a commie. I love money. Good one, Donald. I thought you knew America, Mr. President. Cranberries are actually the state fruit of South Dakota. Lies, you peddle lies. Just like the BBC, just like New York Times. Cranberries, that sounds repulsive. The only fruits I like are the fruits of my economic policies, which are fantastic, by the way. You can ask anyone. If you say so, Mr. President, your total will be $750. $750 smackaroos? But it's just a burger. These are fake prices. This is fake news. Just a burger? Just a burger, Mr. President? That number should be familiar to you. No. No, no, no. Remember, in purgatory, the food is free. We just charge federal income tax. The top one... Oh my goodness, what's that? Oh, it's just the ghost of South Dakota. Excuse me? Legend has it that in the back of the eating car of the South Dakota Hill train, the train you're on, Mr. President, sits a man who, just seconds later, disappears. I don't believe in ghosts. God will save me. But who is he? Some say each person sees something different, usually someone they've wronged in their life. Can you think of anyone? Let me help you, Mr. President. John Kelly? Steve Bannon? Kellyanne Conway? John Dowd? Wrong, wrong. You've got it all wrong. All, all completely wrong. Well, how about you name some? You are really speechless. Absolutely. I could name thousands. You know, I remember this one guy who I didn't pay for painting my apartment, and this other woman who I made slap me with a magazine. Would you shut up, man? No, you interrupted me first, checkmate. He's coming over. We need to address the issue of income inequality in this country. The top 1% owns too much. We are the only major industrialized country in the world without universal health care. What? What absolute shenanigans? This must be Sleepy Joe's rigged earpiece. I heard he needs it. I am once again asking for your financial support, for the people's support. My campaign is about a political revolution. Millions of people standing up and saying, enough is enough. Our government belongs to all of us, and not just the handful of billionaires. He peddles lies. Absolute lies. Just more lies. Where even is this train going? It's moving so slowly. I ran down that ramp, I'll have you know. I ran. I ran. Good one, Donald. Now take me back to the bunker. Right now. I am your president. Best ever, actually. Ah, here he is. President Donald Trump. So a little birdie tells me you want to be on Mount Rushmore, huh? You want to join our little club? Absolutely. In fact, I think I deserve it, actually. Abraham Lamb? Yes, Donald? Well, you know that I've done the most for African Americans out of any president ever in the history of presidents, except for maybe you. What about you, George? It's Mr. President to you. And it's Mr. President to you as well. Checkmate. Well now, I was the first president, and all these are qualified presidents. No, no. We're all Republican. At least we're on the right side. Ah, well, you forget that us old Republicans are now, well, Democrats. Yeah, you're the first president, but I'm the first president to call our armed service members losers and suckers. <laughs> Good one, Donald. You're on a roll tonight. Understood, Donald. Now, like how we wrote the Constitution, the process to get on Mount Rushmore must also be impartial. So here's what we're going to do, Theodore. Don't worry, old chap. We're just going to be asking you some simple questions to determine whether you'll be fit to join us on Mount Rushmore. Which is in South Dakota. Jefferson, our little jokester, the mountaintop does get lonely. Anyway, ready, Donald? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is like that uh, cognito test I took that one time, right? It said I was really smart, like smartest ever. Sure, you'll breeze right through these then. <clears throat> were you, or were you not, impeached? Person. All right, then. Next. Was Amy Coney Barrett, 
good choice for the Supreme Court. Woman. Four score and seven months ago, did you or did you not commit tax evasion? Man. And will you be conceding this election if you lose? Camera. Will you or will you not condemn white supremacy? I'll say anything. Final question. Who is he? TV. No. No, George. You're wrong, George. It's a TV. It has to be a TV. No, Donald. Our answer is no. What? There's no way. You're wrong. That's not even a response. Well, you know what I think? I think that's a nasty question. And that's a terrible thing that you're putting out to the American people, this great nation. Let's bring this to the Supreme Court, see what they say. It might work, and it might not, it might. And I've been right, I've been right a lot, I'm always right. No, Donald. Our decision is final. Feel the burn of a hot South Dakota summer's day. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. Camera, man, TV, man, man, person, camera, camera, woman, person, man, woman, man, TV, TV, man, 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 TV, is it heaven or is it South Dakota? Written by Vanessa Mai and Alec Abramson, Abramson and produced by Julia Fennell. The sound designer uh, was Asin Wood. Special shout outs to him from the chat as well. Uh, the composer for this, uh, for this play is Julia Fennell. The graphic designer is um, whoever it is that designed the state flag, you know. And the actors are Michael, Reed, Harleen, Claire, and Kevin. Thank y'all so much. And we're going to go into our last but not least play, I Arkansas a Ghost. It's Halloween night. Prepare for a good fright. Behold, what a terrible sight. Welcome to the scariest state of them all. Ghosts and werewolves and vampires, oh my. The spooks of this state will make you cry. Better watch out, you might just die. Welcome, welcome to Arkansas. Man, I can't believe it's almost Christmas. Dude, it's Halloween. True, but who can truly tell the time of year when corporations are always trying to shove the most profitable holiday down your throat the moment the first leaf falls? I... I hate Halloween. Ghosts never leave me alone. What? Ghosts aren't real. You do know that, right? Of course ghosts are real. Yeah, they suck. Hell yeah, they do. Guys all seriously believe in ghosts. Yes. yes. You are ridiculous. Well, Devin, maybe the ghosts just don't like you. Ah, uh, to have ghosts not like you, that must be nice. I'm just saying. Arkansas does have a well-documented and rich history of ghost legends in our folklore. I've only ever met one ghost, but let me tell you, was he a neoliberal shill or what? What? Sam Walton. I met the ghost of Sam Walton, founder of Bentonville, Arkansas's very own multinational corporation, Walmart. And I met him in a Walmart. What kind of ghost haunts Walmart? The kind that cares about great value and was literally the founder of Walmart? Duh. Oh yeah. Well, what did he want from you? Well, 
let me tell you. I was all alone in the non-dairy milk section, just trying to decide between oat milk and soy milk. And the ghost of Sam Walton comes up to me. He's very polite, you know. An old-fashioned businessman, very proud of his company. And he asks me, enjoying my Walmart shopping experience. And I say, yes, I am. Thank you very much. And he says... Boo! I'm glad to hear that. Can I help you with anything? Boo! And so I say, can you help me understand how your great value brand foodstuffs are so inexpensive? And so he says, and get this, I can tell you that in song. What? Yeah. And here's what he's saying. People often ask me, Sam, how's everything on sale? I tell them it's quite simple, economies of scale. With a large scale operation and some vertical integration, I became the richest man in the entire nation. People often ask, how are ya? Cheaper than other stores. I tell them tighter margins are fine if you can just sell more. Did this while I was the haunting specter, cornering every business sector as Walmart's very first chief executive director. I know that historically our wages aren't so great, but Amazon is worse categorically. Home Depot deserves more hate. I give consumers cheaper choices as I silence labor voices. Each time I boost our profits, the stock market rejoices! People often ask me, Sam, how do you lower operational costs? I tell them, well, we have a very efficient automated supply chain management system. We have our executive stick to budget travel options. We keep in-store design basic and more. Leverage our retail bargaining power to make suppliers cower. Years after my death, my state is richer by the hour. Go oh, Sam! Jeez, did he leave you alone after that? Well, after he stopped singing, I thanked him for his performance. But he still wouldn't let me shop in peace. So, I did what any normal person would do. Yes? I pointed to the opposite end of the store and yelled, Oh no, your employees! They're unionizing! And just like that, poof, he was gone. <clears throat> Bullshit. Well, at least you didn't need to run for your life. My experiences with ghosts have been much less informative about successful corporate strategies. Imagine this. You're walking in the woods. There's no one around and your phone is dead. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot him. Bill. Clanton. He's following you, about 30 feet back. He gets down on all fours and breaks into a sprint. He's gaining on you. Bill Clanton. You're looking for your car, but you're all turned around. He's almost upon you now, and you can see there's blood on his face. My God, there's blood everywhere. Running for your life. From Bill Clinton. He's brandishing a knife. It's Bill Clinton. Lurking in the shadows. U.S. President Bill Clinton. I don't even think that was a real ghost. That was just Bill Clinton. Well, my ghost was very real. Real hot. <laughs> Say what? You guys need to meet better ghosts. My ghost experience was great. I met a woman like no other. Turned this player into a lover. She didn't breathe, but I didn't care. Lost myself in her undead stare. She held her severed head in her hand. The other one had my heart. We met in the cemetery. And that there was the start of the best hookup of my life. Ghost babe, a beauty to be old. Ghost babe, 200 years old. We found love in the pale moonlight. She tried to kill me, but gave me a fright. She, and she touched my heart. Not even death could keep us apart. She held her head in the air, said my eyes are up here. I was caught unaware. I was frozen in fear till I saw that haunts a Mexi 800s, but they don't make them like that anymore. Oh my god. She was a curvaceous sight, voluptuous. Ghost babe, a beauty to behold. Ghost babe, 200 years old. We 
fell in love in the pale moonlight. She tried to kill me, gave me a fright. She, and she touched my heart. Not even death could keep us apart. Um. Wow. That sure is a uh, a story you've got there. Oh my gosh. I thought I was the only one who fell in love with a ghost. You what now? I fell in love with a ghost. When I met him, it took two weeks for us to fall in love. I let myself believe he was the one. When I met him, he was the one to make me smile. I always came back to his profile. Two lost souls found one another. Two people swiped right and found each other. Now he's a ghost that won't leave my mind alone. Now he is the one that haunts my heart and phone. Brad, why did you not respond to me asking for coffee? Brad, why did you go? Brad, why could you not just tell me? Why ignore me? Things I'll never know. Stop. A dude ghosting you is different from him being a ghost. I don't think there's anything supernatural about Brad. My heartache is supernatural. Your pain is just some douchey frat boy. Oh. I'm sorry we can't all be haunted by important political figures. I'll try and get ghosted by former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee next time. So the stories we have thus far are as follows. A ghost explaining the great value brand. Maybe a ghost, but probably just creepy Bill Clinton. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but ghost babe. And a guy named Brad who probably was posing with a fish in his Tinder photos. It was a very impressive bass. Basically what I suspected. Bullshit. I haven't told my story yet. Oh, do tell. Let me guess. You know a friendly ghost named Casper. Ghosts can be anything but friendly, Devin. You would do well to remember that. I used to know someone like you named Kevin, skeptical, always refusing to believe, always refusing to be careful, but whether you believe in them or not, the undead know you. They know everything about you, the orchids you grow, the new Studio Ghibli posters you just framed for your room, your golden retriever named Daisy, your roommate. A ghost may just know about all of them, and a ghost may decide to take all of that away. Wait, how do you know that I got new Studio Ghibli posters? Sometimes I talk to ghosts. I keep them on my side, because you never know when they'll turn on me. Like how they turned on Kevin. Kevin was succulents and had framed A24 posters. Had past tense. One day, Kevin got into a debate about whether or not ghosts existed. He was arrogant, condescending, sarcastic. The ghosts didn't appreciate that. So, what did they do? Hmm. When was the last time you saw your planks and posters, Devin? I, I, uh, uh... Uh, um, uh, earlier today, right? Uh, I'll just, I'll just text my roommate. Oh, shit, my phone's dead. Better hurry home. <laughs> that should teach him a lesson. So you don't talk to ghosts? Oh, no. That would be cool, though. Then, how did you know about his new poster? He tweeted about them. <laughs> it's still Halloween, and now we have seen a lesson that everyone can believe. 
Beware in the scariest state of them all. Ghosts are very real. They'll haunt you good. So make sure to watch out in your neighborhood. Always be prepared. You know you should. Beware, beware in our cat song. <laughs> All right. Well, now that last one was I, Arkansas, a ghost. Written by Devin Hess and Jada Hart and produced by Robert Carvalho, sound, the sound designer and composer of this sh uh, show was Jack Kramer with special help from Addison Wood and the actors are Honor Torres, also the graphic designer for the show, Daniel, Wen, Harry, and Robert. I'm Seth, and I'm one of the curators for Radio 24, uh, and this is a special shout out to our other curator, Sam Sobel, and our dramaturg, Cameron Bernstein, and our University Theatre Committee liaison, Linnea McCarl. Usually, Theater 24 tickets will cost $4, but because of coronavirus, Radio 24 is available for free online. If you appreciated our place, please consider a one-time donation to a charity or mutual aid fund of your choice. Um, here, we are suggesting that you donate to the Cancel Corona COVID-19 Response Fund, which consists of six high-impact charities on the front line of the coronavirus crisis. You can donate here at cancelcorona.org backslash basic dash donate. Thank y'all for watching this with us and see you next quarter. Fingers